This video is based on the paper Fragment and Forge, breaking Wi-Fi through frame aggregation and fragmentation, and it shows how novel design and implementation flaws in Wi-Fi can be abused in practice. I'll first demonstrate the aggregation design flaw against the macOS laptop. This laptop is connected to a protected Wi-Fi network as indicated by the lock symbol, and the victim will use it to visit websites such as nyu.edu. Notice that the homepage of this website is insecure. However, the login page does use HTTPS as an extra layer of security as indicated by the lock symbol. Before starting the attack, we have to prepare it by running the following script on a server. This script waits for connections from the victim and I'll explain its purpose later. On the server, I'm also running a DNS on the web server to intercept and impersonate websites. I'll also run Wireshark to capture traffic towards the server. We can now start the attack with the following tool. Here I included the protected Wi-Fi network that will be attacked and that we will only target one specific victim. The tool starts by searching for this Wi-Fi network and then it clones this network on a different channel. This malicious clone of the network enables the attacker to reliably manipulate encrypted data frames, which is required to abuse the design flaw. When the victim now enables Wi-Fi, it will connect to the malicious clone. To better understand the attack, I'll also start Wireshark on the victim. We must now trick the victim into connecting to the attacker's server. Here this is accomplished by sending an email to the victim, and although this email looks innocent, it contains a hidden image hosted on the server of the attacker. This causes the victim to download the image from the attacker's server, but instead of sending the image, the attacker will send a malicious TCP packet. This packet is constructed in such a way so that when it's turned into an aggregated Wi-Fi frame, it will cause the injection of a frame that tricks the victim into using our malicious DNS server. The Wi-Fi attacker can detect this packet based on its length and it will set the aggregated flag in the Wi-Fi header before forwarding it to the victim. Due to a design flaw in Wi-Fi, the victim won't notice that the attacker changed this flag. As a result, the victim will process the modified frame and will start using our malicious DNS server. Looking at the victim, we can indeed see that it received a frame containing the malicious DNS server. Note that normally we cannot inject such frames over a TCP connection. This is only possible by abusing design flaws in Wi-Fi. When the victim again visits an insecure website such as nyu.edu, our malicious DNS server will redirect the victim to our own copy of the website. This copy contains a link to an insecure login page and Safari is in fact warning us that we may not be on the real website. However, most users likely won't notice this and will enter their username and password. Because I'm using a fake username and password, the login fails. Nevertheless, when looking at the captured traffic on the attacker's server, we can search for the victim's login attempt and extract the username and password. I also discovered widespread implementation flaws. These are more concerning because the design flaws can be tricky to exploit, while the implementation flaws are trivial to exploit. As an example, I will abuse a plain text injection flaw in an access point to remotely turn on and off a power socket. This power socket can be manually turned on and off, but can also be controlled over Wi-Fi. As an attacker, we can detect such power sockets based on their MAC address. Without knowing the password of the Wi-Fi network, the implementation flaw allows an attacker to easily inject packets into the Wi-Fi network. Because the power socket doesn't use a separate password on top of Wi-Fi, this allows the adversary to remotely turn on and off the power socket. Finally, I'll demonstrate another implementation flaw that allows an attacker to inject packets. This will be abused to punch a hole in the router's firewall so that the attacker can connect with and detect devices in the victim's home network. In our case, the target is an outdated Windows 7 computer that is vulnerable to Bluekeep. This computer is inside a local network meaning someone on the internet cannot directly access it. However, the following script will punch a hole in the router's firewall such that an attacker on the internet can connect to local devices behind it. First though, I'll connect to the server and I'll start Wireshark to capture any traffic that is sent towards it. Going back to the Wi-Fi attacker, 
we can see that the script injects a plain text aggregated Wi-Fi frame that looks like an EOPOL handshake message. This causes a vulnerable device to accept the injected frame even though it's not encrypted. The frame is nevertheless processed as an aggregated Wi-Fi frame, meaning we can sneak in a TCP packet inside the aggregated frame. This TCP packet punches a hole in the router's firewall and is eventually received by the attacker. From this, we learn the public IP address on port that can be used to access the Windows 7 machine. We'll abuse this to take over the outdated Windows 7 machine by exploiting BlueKey. We first configure Metasploit with the IP address on port and then run the exploit. Once the exploit completed, we can monitor what the user is typing, which we illustrate by stealing the login and password of the victim. As another example, it's also possible to take a screenshot of the Windows machine to see what the victim is doing. Finally, it's also possible to execute any program on the victim's machine, which here is illustrated by starting the calculator. To prevent the demonstrated attacks, you must update all your Wi-Fi devices.